In Dashur, 40 kilometers south of Cairo, two pyramids vie to be the most beautiful. This is where King Snefru built two groundbreaking monuments, allegedly the first true pyramids, a vital element to understand the evolution of pyramid building. To the south lies the Bent Pyramid and its peculiar angle. Look at it. It's a beautiful pyramid. With, if it is bent, this pyramid is unique. The other one is the Red Pyramid, perhaps the very first triangle-shaped pyramid. This is the first pyramid with a smooth slope all the way to the end. It's perfect. Both pyramids were supposedly made by Snefru, founder of the fourth pharaoh dynasty and father of the famous Khufu. Two pyramids whose brand new building techniques were probably used as reference by all pharaohs who came after. In order to try to solve the mystery and to fully grasp the novelty of Snefru's thinking, the greatest builder in ancient Egypt, Archaeologists were authorized to scan both pyramids from the air. A powerful tool is used to obtain an extremely accurate digital 3D copy of the monuments through thousands of pictures, photogrammetry. There's an algorithm in the background that puts the geometry we saw in the field back together. Thanks to photogrammetry, we can really understand what happened. These flaws right here, we can see them clearly for the first time. Two pyramids with different shapes that puzzle Egyptologists. With special authorization, some of them will discover the inside of these pyramids for the very first time. The Bent Pyramid at Dashur. This is a dream come true. Photogrammetry, drones, 3D images. Technology will help us uncover the mysteries of the Red Pyramid and the Bent Pyramid, thanks to the expertise of the greatest archaeologists and Egyptologists from the United States, Egypt, and Europe. Together, they'll try to solve the final mysteries of Dashur. Welcome to Archaeology 2.0. We have to leave Cairo and go deeper into the desert to discover a treasure of ancient Egypt. Barely 40 kilometers south of Cairo lies a fascinating site, Dashur. Two major buildings can be found here, both built more than 4,500 years ago. Two pyramids that acted as the missing link to help Egyptologists better understand the evolution of the methods used to build such giant stone structures. Indeed, Snefru, Khufu's father, intended to revolutionize building techniques. When we reach Dashur, there's nothing around. It's in the middle of the desert. And here we have these two pyramids standing there on the sand. Snefru arrives here, where nobody has been before him. He's got all the place in the world. He's the first one here, a totally empty spot. And so the king chooses Dashur, a place where no other pharaoh has left his mark, a unique site to build a pyramid. Because Snefru is thinking about a colossal project that will turn architecture upside down. There's some kind of revolution, and not just from an architectural point of view. In the ideology, too, he suggested something amazing. This construction shows the angle in a beautiful way that showed how the Egyptian, at the beginning of Dynasty Four, when they started building for the first time a true pyramid, it's unique. And so in Dashu, Snefro builds the Red Pyramid perfect pyramid as we usually picture them, with a triangle shape. And also another one with a more mysterious shape, the Bent Pyramid. 2,500 years BC, these two pyramids stand like two sisters facing each other. They're only one kilometer apart and both measure almost 105 meters high, which is the equivalent of a 42-story building.
try to understand how Snefru's architects started the project, the Egyptian authorities gave a special authorization to film the area from the air. For the first time, a drone will fly over the funeral complex of Dashur, more than 500 meters above the ground. This is the only way to fully uncover this massive site. Moreover, an unprecedented scientific campaign has been set up to try and solve the riddle of these pyramids and to understand how Snefru managed to build them. Outside with the camera, I'm going round the pyramids several times, and I'll shoot a thousand pictures or so. We'll go inside and trigger the cameras regularly in order to scan the main rooms, the tomb, and everything we'll be able to record. Tens of thousands of pictures will then be put together on the computer to become a 3D digital model of the pyramid. This is called photogrammetry. Such a full-size scan can show what the human eye can't see and thus reveal the stone's last secrets. Once we've shot all the photos, an algorithm will automatically analyze them and by crossing images, it will rebuild the geometry of an element we took the pictures of in 3D. Much like a radioscopy, the experts use the drone to cover the whole area. Put the drone uh, pretty low. Uh, yeah, a little more on the right. Okay, nice. For Egyptologists and experts, this new technology is incredible. The work we're doing today will be invaluable in 10, 20, perhaps 50 years, because monuments change with time. They erode little by little and disappear. But photogrammetry allows us to record a complete image from every angle for future generations. When used in Dashur, this digital technology will help with important analysis. After weeks of work, experts will be able to supply the first data. And these results will perhaps help us uncover the last secrets of these two mysterious pyramids, help us understand how the two pyramids of Dashur, the Red Pyramid and the Bent Pyramid, were built inside and outside. But while waiting for the results of the photogrammetric analysis, a closer look at the two pyramids in Dashur already shows clearly that Snefru intended to revolutionize architecture. According to Egyptian beliefs, pyramids were intended to help pharaohs achieve eternal life. Snefru's engineers wanted to build something entirely new. To try to understand Snefru's project in Dashur, we meet Mark Lehner, an American archaeologist who spent his life studying pyramids. He no longer wanted to build in the old-fashioned pyramid way. He wanted a true pyramid, maybe because the ideas of sun worship were gaining in the royal house. And he wanted to be one with the sun. And so a true pyramid would be like monumentalizing the rays of the sun, and he would be buried underneath. Up until now, Snefru's forefathers had succeeded in building stepped pyramids. Pyramids built like staircases going toward the sky. Architects at that time had mastered the shape for tombs. This time, though, Egyptians are looking for something else entirely. For all the world, it almost looks like Snefru is on purpose doing a research and development program for building the best, most perfect pyramid. And indeed, the Bent Pyramid and the Red Pyramid are pioneers. Excavations have proven that they were the first architectural experimentations of classic pyramids as we envision them today. It is quite clear that at that time they were still uh, trying to find out how a building of a pyramid should work and how a pyramid should look like. Architects will try to build a giant pyramid with a brand new shape. No more staircase-like buildings. 
But how did they come to think about a triangle? And how could they obtain a building that looked like a sun ray pointing toward the sky? It seems they started with quite a sharp angle, around 60 degrees. Nobody knew what a true pyramid should look like. So he started here with a pyramid we think smaller than this at about 60 degrees. And so they started very steep. But the challenge is tricky. The pyramid has to look like a sun ray pointing toward the sky. During excavations, Egyptologists have found the proof of this sharp 60 degree angle. Meaning Dashura was some kind of testing ground. This is where Egyptian architects tried to create the triangular pyramids that we know today, the famous pyramids of Giza. They started with the idea that all sides of a pyramid should be the same, to have a perfect triangle. But it seems that when they were trying to do so at the Bent Pyramid, they ran into problems. And they did not know what the problem actually was. But building a triangle is difficult indeed. To understand this, we need the results of the digital copy experts have been working on. After several months, it is now ready. Computers have analyzed thousands of images to put together the whole bent pyramid in three dimensions. Thanks to photogrammetry, ancient Egypt specialist Frank Monnier discovers construction flaws that are immediately obvious. With these flaws right here, we can see them clearly for the first time thanks to photogrammetry. If we zoom in on the upper part, we see foundations that look like waves. Here, for instance, the blocks are leaning quite a lot in order to try and compensate for the blocks next to them. Nothing is straight. Thanks to photogrammetry, we can really understand what happened. It's obvious that these stones have been placed with haste, meaning the construction was completed as fast as possible. Photogrammetry allows us to look at all the details of the upper stone layers. The same stones we can see at the bottom of the pyramid. These drone-made shots help us to understand for the first time why the monument was about to collapse. We notice that some blocks are very high, for instance, and then right next to them are piles of shorter blocks. It's as if several teams had been working in their corner, in a rush, trying to compensate the differences in height. To find more clues that could explain such instability, archaeologists also focused on the ground itself. And they have some doubts regarding the strength of the foundations. They also started right on the desert surface. Of not on bedrock, solid stone, but, you know, on a surface of clay and gravel. And the evidence is that they were having problems with the pyramid slipping and cracking. The foundations aren't strong enough. Although the crust may seem hard, right under it lies a thick layer of sand. So the ground is moving, a tricky thing for architects. The engineers didn't build a hard base the pyramid could stand on. The Ben Pyramid was built on a rather not very good place because of the subsoil here is not very solid. And during the construction, there started to be uh, really the real problems with the stability of the masonry. The only way left now to stabilize the building is to expand its base so that the foundations cover more ground. His engineers decided to put an envelope around the 60-degree pyramid, and this girdle, this lower part, was at the lesser slope of 54 to 55 degrees. The pyramid becomes lower. Egyptian architects build a new layer encasing the original building. 
a layer with a flatter slope, which makes the pyramid wider and less pointy. Thanks to 3D reproduction, we're able to calculate the angle of the pyramid and conclude that there's a 54 degree slope, a much less sharp angle indeed. Why? To stabilize the pyramid. Yet Snefru's architects fail. Their idea that should have stabilized the pyramid doesn't work and even creates more problems. They added another layer of masonry to expand the pyramid. But once they were halfway up the building, this new layer slightly slid. Despite their tricks, the architects noticed that major cracks are showing up all over the building. This is a catastrophe as the pyramid may collapse. I've always been struck by this colossal crack that goes right through the casing. And I think I can even see it going through the core masonry. The cracks can be seen thanks to 3D visualization. And so, despite the architects decreasing the angle to 54 degrees, the building continues to deteriorate. Excavations even prove that Egyptian architects intended to consolidate the pyramid even more. It was now 47 meters high. To avoid adding even more weight to the structure, they decided to change the shape of the pyramid. So they reduced the slope even more to 43 degrees, and this is what we see. Facing the risk of collapse due to deep cracks, the builders decided to be practical. They take an unusual and important decision. Despite their idea of building a triangular pyramid, they changed their plans. About halfway up, 47 meters above the ground, they completely changed the angle of the slope. Thanks to this, they can complete a shorter pyramid faster. But it's the end of the perfect triangle. So this photo is very well showing the whole situation. The reactions of the monuments, here we can see the, the bend, the line which is uh, dividing the face uh, with higher angle and lower angle. The digital reproduction helps visualize the breaking point Egyptians created on the pyramid like never before. And photogrammetry helps confirm the 43 degree angle as well. This angle was chosen in order to complete the pyramid more easily without it collapsing. Although some Egyptologists believe this double slope was intended right from the beginning, most analyses tend to show otherwise. I don't think such a bent shape was intended. It's because the problems kept piling up that they decided to complete the pyramid with this shape. To finish this pyramid with the angle that you see in the bottom part would not have been possible. Reduce the angle for the top was the only thing that they could have done. The tip of the pyramid no longer looks like a sun ray. Yet this new shape, called bent, proves just how resourceful Egyptian architects were. They had an extraordinary ability to adapt. By analyzing 3D images, it seems they focused on key locations to try to make the structure look perfect. When we look at the upper part, we see that they made sure the sides were flat and the edges are straight too. So they clearly did a good job making sure the structure wouldn't collapse. They actually understood that they didn't need the foundations to be perfectly flat for the structure to hold. And despite a curious shape, the calculations ended up being accurate, since the Bent Pyramid still stands 4,500 years later. Impressive and majestic. Yet beautiful as it may be, many experts consider it to be the result of the problems coming up during construction. Another proof of that is that architects deemed it unstable and went on with another project. Indeed, Snefru started a new work, the Red Pyramid. Architects didn't go very far to start the new building. 
they simply change the billing site to one kilometer away. This time, though, they seem to know what they're doing. It seems Egyptians at the time had decided what shape the building would have. And one of their goals was to prevent any kinds of cracks, such as those in the bent pyramid. This new project started with the same objectives as before, the same shape, the same dimensions, but with the use of techniques that were tried and reliable. Probably because of these uh, problems with, uh, with stability, he started to, to build a red pyramid. Architects are still keen on building a triangle, but also what experts call a smooth-sided pyramid, which means a pyramid whose sides follow a straight line without any angles breaking it. Engineers start with the blueprints of the bent pyramid, but correct their mistakes. First, the foundations. This time, they won't build directly on sand. And so, unlike the bent pyramid, the red pyramid doesn't rest on sand, but on a hard foundation prepared in advance. The consequence is a much more regular structure, as photogrammetry shows. Thanks to 3D images, we discover that the stones are placed in a much more orderly and regular fashion. Every stone in the first layer has been laid on rock, a hard and stable surface, and then the pyramid was built with horizontal layers. All the experience accumulated during previous works has been used here in order to build a dwelling that would satisfy the pharaoh. This time, there's a bigger and more stable square-shaped base, 219 meters long on each side. Another problem in the bent pyramid was the starting angle. 60 degrees was too sharp and made the structure unstable. For the red pyramid, the architects decide to use the same angle they used to complete the bent pyramid, 43 degrees. They were afraid, because they had an experience in the other one. In that time, they found that the change in the angle was perfect. They started the angle to be 43 degrees. Snefru went north to build the red pyramid, totally at the slope of 43 to 44 degrees. Now with the red pyramid, he has a first true pyramid without any problems, no slipping and cracking. Digital technologies are the perfect tool to confirm this analysis. By flying more than 500 meters above the ground, the triangular shape Snefru wanted becomes obvious. When we look at the red pyramid from the outside, from the air, it shows a kind of perfection that the bent pyramid doesn't have. It's important to remember that we're looking at the oldest, smooth-sided pyramid known today. This is the first one built successfully. A sand giant. Magnificent. Today, it is still the third tallest pyramid in Egypt, 105 meters high. And so the red pyramid was the first triangular pyramid the first smooth-sided triangular pyramid. Yet some experts don't consider it to be perfect. The red pyramid has a very low angle, 43 degrees. It looks a bit like it sank under its own weight. Could this be proof that the red pyramid isn't perfect? It may have common points with the bent pyramid, the very same one that is supposedly a failure. When we look at the shape of the red pyramid through photogrammetry, we clearly see that they have the same dimensions. If we could put them together in 3D, we could see that the bent pyramid would fit perfectly inside the red pyramid. Indeed, the bent pyramid and its 43-degree angle on top can be inserted inside the red pyramid, built with the same angle but right from the start. So if both pyramids have common points, could the bent pyramid truly be the result of construction mistakes? Is it truly a failed prototype? We'll check this in the field by going inside the bowels of the bent pyramid. 
scientists were authorized to visit the inside of the pyramid, an area usually off limits. Mark Lehner has been studying ancient Egypt for more than 40 years and is now about to go inside this majestic monument for the very first time. Yeah, first time to go inside the Bend Pyramid at Dashur. This is a dream come true. After 20 minutes spent crawling inside the pyramid, Mark Lehner finally reaches the inner sanctum, the burial chamber. A chamber located at the heart of the pyramid, quite high up. On this 3D image, it seems to have several levels. Mark will climb all the way up. Whoa, here are we. Okay, Syed. Are you okay? No. We have to look at the chamber from above. The first thing he notices are the huge tree trunks. This is absolutely amazing. I see these timbers from the time of Snefru still in place, bracing the walls. The wood is in perfect shape despite having been placed here more than 4,500 years ago. These logs, cedar tree from Lebanon, have miraculously survived. Yet despite this incredible discovery, the difficulties faced when building the vault and walls are obvious. Just like with the outer layer, architects seem to have been facing problems. If you can see the individual blocks through all the bats that are flying about, you see there's a cross piece, uh, a bracing log up there could these logs have been added to strengthen the building? Looking at the vault, it's not strange to wonder whether these logs are here to support the structure. The higher chamber is in bad shape. For a long time, we thought wood had been added to strengthen the chamber so it wouldn't collapse. But this theory doesn't really hold. So this wooden frame isn't here to consolidate the pyramid then. To answer this question, archaeologists now have access to a digital copy of the inside of the mysterious pyramid. It's easy to visualize the burial chamber at 360 degrees on these images. And also to analyze the building without lighting problems. We have cedar logs here which had been cut by the Egyptians at the time. And so if these logs in these places were removed, then it's obvious that their function wasn't to strengthen the building, but rather to help the building process. Yet the damage in the burial chamber of the Bent Pyramid is obvious. Thanks to 3D images, it's possible to study the burial chamber like a radioscopy and determine whether such damage is solely due to a faulty construction. This new method of visualization allows researchers to uncover new elements. First of all, the chamber itself looks like a pyramid. What kind of a shape do you want to give a chamber inside a pyramid? So what you actually see here, an interior space that actually fits to the design of a pyramid, the negative of a pyramid. So Egyptians were not only trying to give a triangular shape to the outside, but also to the inside of the pyramid. Yet here again, the shape isn't perfect. Thanks to photogrammetry, we really understand what happened. We can see that the whole structure is trying to balance itself. Stones fall off, crack, and a dome appears. That's what happens in caves as well. We see that the wall was carved again, but the process is natural and not everything has been carved a second time. So a change in the structure weakened the chamber. But what happened exactly? 
When looking at this 3D view, it seems the architects knew precisely what they wanted to build. It's like being inside a cave. Everything fell apart. But that's a problem with the building material. The craftsmanship itself was flawless. And so digital reproduction proves that the Bent Pyramid has not only been plagued by mistakes in the building process, but also by internal issues. There's a clear erosion of the limestone inside the burial chamber. Thus, the study of the inside of the Bent Pyramid supports the idea that it is a failed attempt and that the Red Pyramid will be Sneferu's successful work. Yet to confirm this theory, archaeologists decided to examine the inside of the Red Pyramid as well. A pyramid that seems perfect and even. But is that so inside too? Egyptologist Vassal Dabrev will guide us inside a pyramid that is much easier to access than the Bent Pyramid. First conclusion, the three chambers are much bigger. More importantly, the ceiling of the burial chamber is perfect. There's beautiful corbeling up there, perfect, without any beams. It goes quite high, 18 meters or so, a perfectly made corbeling. A straight ceiling built like a reverse staircase. That's what experts call a corbelled ceiling. It means that we bring the walls closer, little by little. The rooms are very pointy, but they can support the whole masonry because the top is very narrow. Thanks to photogrammetry, we can go below the pyramid and discover for the very first time what the chambers look like from the outside. There's no more doubts or changes here. Whereas when comparing with the Bent Pyramid, we can see lots of hesitations. The processes aren't complete. We can see how perfect the corbeling is. It's really clean, like it was made with a laser. The corbelled ceiling is perfectly made this time. We also notice that the triangular shape of the outside of the pyramid is found inside the chambers as well. No doubts, no construction problems. The Red Pyramid is obviously perfect. Yet some experts aren't convinced. The Snefru's pyramids aren't very convincing. Even the Red Pyramid, that we call perfect, has a low angle of 43 degrees, which gives it a strange-looking shape. It's a bit squashed. Another element tends to contradict the fact that the Red Pyramid is more of a success than the Bent Pyramid, the external casing. It's almost all gone on the Red Pyramid. but it's less worn on the Bent Pyramid. It seems paradoxical when considering that its peculiar shape is due to mistakes in the building process. Some Egyptologists believe this external casing is the proof that the Bent Pyramid isn't a failure. On the contrary. This is the best kept pyramid in Egypt. It still has 70% of its outer layer. It's so well made that for millennia, people couldn't extract the stones even if they tried, and so they couldn't destroy it. An imperfect pyramid that continues to surprise. Out of both buildings, the Bent Pyramid resisted both time and pillagers better. Why? Because architects laid the stones sloping inwards, according to a particular method. It's the same as abutment. The stones are placed towards the inside of the building, but they're not horizontal, they're tilted. These tilted stones are obvious thanks to photogrammetry. Architects use this method to try to correct building problems once again. They probably thought it increased the stability, almost like a leaning, retaining wall. It's clear that they're changing their methods. The technique hasn't been used for the Red Pyramid, though, 
since it didn't have the same stability issues. The difference in the methods used tends to prove that the Egyptians tried to improve their methods. It becomes quite obvious when looking closely at the outer shell of the bent pyramid. We well, can see here, already at the bottom of the bent pyramid, they have cracks and chips fall off. You can actually see how they're working it out and where they're making mistakes. And so they're squaring off the break and they would have put a little patch in there that would have fit. Almost like patching your jeans. They were having difficulties. They were not so skilled. They didn't have the generations of experience yet. And you can actually see the human hand and you can see how it's practicing and reaching for that perfection. These excavations confirm that there has indeed been an evolution in the construction methods. During their search on the Red Pyramid, experts discovered cladding leftovers under the sand. A very smooth and regular cladding, expertly crafted. Thanks to a 3D view, we can see how well carved the blocks are. All stones have a similar size. There aren't any patches. The Egyptians didn't make the same mistakes as with the Bent Pyramid. They managed to improve their stone carving techniques. The photogrammetry shows us what's left of some cladding blocks on the east side. We clearly see the horizontal layers. Everything is straight. It's like reaching a certain architectural perfection in pyramid building during the Old Kingdom. Even if the outer casing of the Red Pyramid is almost entirely gone, whereas the one on the Bent Pyramid is still there, the analysis of the stones used proves once more that the Red Pyramid was built with better techniques. So yes, we don't have the outer casing for the most part, but where we have it, it looks better, the blocks look bigger, the joinery is, is finer. Everything suggests, it's no one thing that proves anything. But everything, all the evidence, all the material evidence suggests that was the practice pyramid, and this became the near-perfect pyramid. Beyond all the existing evidence found so far, one last clue would help determine which pyramid is the perfect one for the Egyptians. If it is the Red Pyramid, it means that King Snefru would be buried here. Yet despite numerous excavations, his sarcophagus has never been found inside the burial chamber. We looked for the sarcophagus inside the ground. That's why we dug five, six meters deep in order to go inside the monument. But we didn't find anything. No sarcophagus. Such a mystery means the Red Pyramid should be investigated some more. Yet experts often consider such a perfect pyramid much less interesting than the strange bent pyramid. The red pyramid is often perceived as a simple pyramid without any mysteries. But it's not that simple. The fact there's no sarcophagus is of course important, but there's something else that indicates that the red pyramid may be more complex than it seems. There's something much more curious. There's a corridor leading to the upper chamber. It seems to be the regular access to the chamber. Yet a closer look at this corridor tells us that it didn't exist initially. Mark Lehner is also wondering about this corridor as its dimensions aren't consistent. You see how the, the stones here belly out and all along you see this unfinished work and especially at the beginning of the corridor because they haven't finished dressing this side or the other side, you can see again the marks of their pointed chisel. Because they didn't finish that, here at the bottom, that's very narrow indeed, 85 centimeters. And that's an interesting observation. And if Snefru, if he was buried in a stone sarcophagus, they had to put that stone sarcophagus in the room before completing the pyramid, or that sarcophagus had to be small enough to get through this corridor. 
To better determine whether this corridor was built right from the start and understand its surprising shape, experts studied it through photogrammetry. And their conclusion is that it was indeed modified. We can see that the corridor was built in two steps. The ochre part was dug during the antiquity, whereas the gray part, the lower part, was built during the 19th century. It was dug in a much rougher way by those who dug inside the chamber's floor. And so the lower part was built during the 19th century to look for the sarcophagus. But what about the ceiling of the corridor? It doesn't seem to have been built by the architects of the pyramid, and photogrammetry confirms this hypothesis. There's a major detail here. The seals follow the length of the corridor, which means that it hasn't been built. It's been drilled. It means that the so-called burial chamber was initially built without any entrance. The Red Pyramid seems to hold many more mysteries. Experts find the access to the burial chamber rather strange. Perhaps the pyramid isn't as perfect as expected. In this corridor, for instance, one vital element usually found before burial chambers is missing, a portcullis. Protections that would seal the entrance to the chamber, like a bulletproof door. Some experts believe portcullises are essential. If it is indeed a burial chamber, there should be a portcullis. One, two, three. But it was never intended. It's not part of this monument. And so, this is not a funeral building. The lack of a portcullis inside the Red Pyramid proves that it is not perfect inside. But that's not all. Several elements that are usually found around pyramids and that make them funeral complexes are missing here such as an outer wall, a small pyramid called satellite pyramid, or tombs. None of these can be found near the Red Pyramid. Some experts see this as proof that it wasn't picked as King Snufru's tomb by the Egyptians. A pyramid doesn't stand alone. It's part of a funeral complex, a funeral temple. None here. An outer wall? None here. So what elements of a funeral complex do we have here? None. These elements, the temple, the outer wall, the satellite pyramid, aren't anywhere near the Red Pyramid. Yet surprisingly, they were built around the Bent Pyramid. With the Bent Pyramid, you have everything complete. No way that the king will be buried in the Red Pyramid. And the other components are on there. The king will never be a god if there is no architectural components. A paradox. Could the Bent Pyramid, whose burial chamber seemed to have faced many construction problems, be Snefro's tomb after all? Most experts remain careful and think it's impossible to tell for sure. Whether he wanted to be then buried at the Bent Pyramid, whether in the Red Pyramid, whether this was then changing even several times, and where he finally was buried, we have actually no idea. But one thing is sure, even if we don't know where Snefru was buried, the architectural revolution he started changed forever how pyramids were built. Architects and craftsmen improved their methods to reach such beautiful regularity. And for the first time, Snefru managed to build colossal monuments. Snefru's pyramids here in Dashur gather 3.5 million cubic meters of stone. Khufu was only 2 million. 3.5 million cubic meters of stone. Snefru built the equivalent of nine Eiffel Towers a monumental endeavor. Snefru, he is the pyramid builder par excellence because he's building pyramids on a bigger scale even than Khufu's Great Pyramid at Giza. If you add up the volume of all his pyramids, it exceeds that of Khufu. 
The two pyramids in Dashur with a missing link understand the architectural evolution between the old stepped pyramid, built like staircases, and the pyramid like this one, which is one of the seven wonders of the world, Khufu. Khufu, the son of Sneferu, learned in the field. He learned from his father's mistakes and could directly tell the shape, slope, and height he wanted for his tomb. Khufu doesn't exist without Sneferu. Khufu is in Dashur. He participates in the projects, he works for his father, and he'll bring the same teams from Dashur to Giza. So in order to understand the great Khufu pyramid, we must first understand Sneferu in Dashur. Dashur remains a key element to understand the secrets of Egyptian architects. The location allowed Sneferu's heir, Khufu, to build a pyramid with perfect dimensions that still stands today. Thanks to the Red Pyramid and the Bent Pyramid, Egyptologists have discovered the missing link to explain the evolution of the pyramids. And thanks to Technology 2.0, the theories archaeologists had regarding the shape of both monuments and the building of burial chambers have been expanded. Yet one mystery remains. Where has Pharaoh Snefer been buried? Dashur has yet to reveal all its secrets.